Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm. I'm Christy. And as you can see, we're missing RJ again, but that's okay because he got called away to go get an axle for the trailer, and I'll get to that in mending fences. So we're going to start with uh, in the chapel, Revelations 11 11. But after the three and a half days, the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and terror struck those who saw them. Remember that no matter what, the world is throwing at us God's got this okay so I know a lot of people are worried about um, the coronavirus and all of that stuff but guys as Christians just have faith okay so um, the Bible also says to listen to wise men so follow the guidelines given to us by the CDC and everybody else and we'll be just fine Okay, um, so that being said, enough on that topic, we're just gone. Okay, uh, let's start within the barn stalls. So, um, this week I am super, super excited. Okay, I was super excited before, but now I'm like, I was in tears earlier. So, yeah, okay, so not bad tears. So, just hang in there and you'll see. Um, we had a set of twins, I believe it was Biscotti, that gave us a set, a baby boy and a baby girl this morning. So that brings our sheep up to five babies. Um, remember, we've downsized, so it's not going to be 30, 40. Um, but we do have five, so um, right now. I'm super tickled about that. Remember, we're naming them character names. Any character. We're not being, you know, it, it's not TV shows, movies, what it's just characters. Um, the There are two things that have me just, one has me in tears and one I was just super excited about. So, the first one I'm going to show you, I have to run away and get it because RJ isn't here. But I'll show you. Hang on. So I'd like you to meet Corey. Corey is a tortoise. He's not a turtle. And he is super duper cute. Now he's a baby. Okay. And so we're keeping him warm and keeping him in the tub. Oh, and he's pooping. Great. Thank you, Corey. Yes, he's got a little poopy there. Yes. Okay. And Randall is in love with Corey and he's down here. So, this is Corey. He is sweet as pie. And he is going to be free roaming in the garden when he gets... He can't go outside until he's about 9 inches in diameter. And then he's got to be covered so that hawks don't carry him off. But, he is going to get really big. He's super sweet. Look at that face. How do you just not love that face? Oh. Anyway, so, um, yeah, when he gets big, he'll be about 15 before we really before you can really just see him walking around in the I'll put him down on my little thing here because that's poopy that's dirty so yeah you finish pooping on there it's not on my hand so <laughs> I'm kind of waiting for him to finish um so he will be big he they live to be about 100 to 120 years old yep I know I'm 51 no I'm not going to live to be 170 something but RJ has assured me that he will take care of him. And then his, um, and they're not as shy as turtles. See, he, you pick him up and he just sticks his head out and stuff. He's like, what you doing? Um, and he's super cute. Aren't you baby boy? Well, I say baby boy. Um, he's actually too little to be figured out what he is yet. So I say he, but it is what it is. His little feet are so cute. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> He's like, I'm backing away. Back away. But he will grow to be super huge. And he will be free roaming. I'm going to, I've always done those tub gardens. I'm going to rearrange the tub gardens and do what is safe for tortoise food on the ground. 
um, things like tomatoes, which are not safe for tortoises, are going to be done up in tubs. So we will be moving the garden around since it's spring and that. I may have to dig up some annuals. I don't know. Um, the onions, they say he eats onion greens. I've got all those walking onions out there. He will have him a feast. The one thing that um, we do have to watch very, very closely is the fact that tortoises move slow and his food supply and water supply has to be within a day's walk for him. We'll see how far he can walk, um, but he's getting cold, so I'm going to go put him back in his tub. I'll be right back. He is super cute, though. down in there and he's going right for his little uh, house his hut whatever and I stopped and he hand sanitized so sorry because I'm also eating my dinner oh, it's my lunch Randall and Moose Randall all right I might have to go put him in his kennel too hey RJ normally has him out this time of day so he's really riled up all right and he's got a toy he's playing with Okay, so that is one thing I was super excited about. Um, the tiny house will now be the spinning tortoise house. And we're going to have the tortoise out there and my spinning wheels and, of course, me. <laughs> I'm just me. And the hedgehog will be out there and moose. So, and Wilbur and Carl probably too. But, anyway. Um... So that's that. And I did name him Corey. Officially, I'm just going to be put it right out there. His name's Corona. Okay? He is the one good thing that came out of the coronavirus for me. I was stuck in Sand Springs. It's a complete God thing. Um, I was just in the right place at the right time, being stuck there for work. My hair's still half wet. Sorry, guys. Um, and it was a total God thing just to come upon him, and he's and the way it all happens. So, yep, he's a little bitty. He is growing, but he will grow slow. So, he probably will be, hey! He probably will be in his enclosure that he has right now. Randall and Moose! Do I have to say it again? They both sit and look at me like, we ain't doing nothing. Um, but he'll be in that closure, enclosure for probably about three years. Um, he won't be turned loose until five years, I think is when they said, at least nine inches in diameter. And then we're going to use the chicken run that has the chicken wire across the top. It's low, and it's where we put the babies out and get them used to being outside. Because I don't want anything to carry him off. But when he is 25 years old, or even 15 years old, he'll be big and walking through the garden and doing his thing. So I am super, super stoked to have Corey. I did name him Corona, but we call him Corey for short. So, um just me being silly but I like the name Corey so I'm good okay so the second thing that has me super super stoked is that Sierra gave us a surprise goat um, and when I say surprise we got her as a yearling seven years ago I'm gonna cry she's never bred she's never she's just been out there we shear her i love her fleece and i kept her around just because if you remember her and cinnamon came to us they had been so inline bred that they had food allergies cinnamon had to wear a cone at one time sienna didn't like people at all like she would freak out if you came here and run off um so um, they're the two goats that we brought from Texas and had to stop at a vet's office right then on the way home to get medical care. So, um, all of our other Angoras have passed, okay? They're all eight, nine, ten years old, or would have been. None of them passed before they were eight, I think. 
Um, but we still had Sienna. And she was kind of my girl. She's got only one horn. She, her health just isn't great. We never, ever had expected her to breed. Now, yeah, she ran the sheep and the goat thing. And, yeah, the billy was out there. But in all these years we've had her, she's never bred because she's been so small, so frail. Um, we have to make sure that she gets food. She gets pushed around a lot. But, yeah. She gave me a little boy. So, um, he will be staying forever. He's my last, him and Layton are the last ties to, sorry, that's my work phone. Oh, and I have to take this. So, we're actually going to pause and I'll talk to you guys. Okay, I'm back. My food is cold. It's just beef stroganoff, so, I mean, it still tastes good, but it's gravy, noodles, and meat, right? Okay. Where was I? Oh, Sienna. Um, and I can't even think of it without... My heart is so overjoyed that she gave us a baby. And it's not just that she gave us a baby. It's that that baby is my last ties to my Angora goats. And so he will be staying here forever. Um, I talked to RJ. He said he'd banned him. And um, we're going to keep him out the duration of his life because he is the last um if you remember we had very few angora goats um because we do rescue we didn't they just don't thrive very well here on our farm so we shifted to milk goats did great with those so that's what we're going to kind of stick to we have downsized so you know the sheep the goats um yeah, but I am super, super excited. Um, I will get pictures of him. I know that there is a Facebook Live, and my camera is a different camera, so it didn't connect very well. It, I didn't have good um, internet this morning, but I was so, so excited because we were doing two, the twins, and they were dirty and cold, and you got to get them in the barn, and... Um, Scotty was passing the placenta and you know you're doing all of this and you look up and then here it's this little guy and I'm just super super I guess it should have dawned on me that she was staying close to the barn it, it just didn't I don't know she stayed in the we have um, an awning off the barn with hay and little stalls out there and we leave the stalls open as a matter of fact Melody puts her two twins in the stall at night if she had a way to close that door I think she would <laughs> She puts them in there, then she sleeps in the doorway to block them. And it, they've got hay down there and little bedding, so, yeah. But, anyway, so, and it was suggested to me that I name him Luke, because Luke is uh, the physician in the Bible, so, and it is character, so he might just end up being called Luke. I, I don't know. I want something... I gotta see his character first. Um, remember, he's just learning to walk today, so he kind of stumbles and gangly, but I already been out there, and he's so soft. Oh my God, he's super, super soft. And he's white, so I can dye his fleece any way I want. Anyway, now keep in mind, he is only half Angora goat, and I have one other half Angora goat left, um, Layton, and she is here for a while too. So, yeah. Anyway, okay. Mending fences. Let's move on to why RJ isn't here. Um, he went to go get the axle for the... We had a problem with the big 16-foot trailer. And the axle slid or was bent or something. Anyway, it's being replaced today and getting new lights. So, um, when they ordered, when the guy ordered the axle, he was sent the wrong one. RJ to hurry up the whole process of getting our trailer back because we've been out without it for a couple of weeks now and he's been having to borrow somebody's um he went and picked up that wrong axle took it back to tulsa picked up the right axle and took it back to where the wrong axle is where we're having the trailer worked on so he was called out to do that today um but that is the one thing that is being worked on i've tried to work on other things 
I've got a hay feeder that I need that's a goat hay feeder that the baby goats have broke and I'm just going to remove it. Um, I haven't gotten that done. Uh, you'll find out why in the farmhouse. Uh, yeah, just it's a little niche to keep you watching. I refer to things so that you'll know what's coming up. Uh, I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm just tired. Um, anyway, so we've been doing that. Uh, the garden is ready to go. I just have to figure out the plants. And I want to start now getting used to having certain tub gardens. I've got some research to finish before I can do that. So um, we might have to move some things, um, that kind of stuff. But it's too wet right now to do anything. You walk across that much water just to get across the pasture. It has not stopped raining yet. So on that note, we're going to move right on into In the Yarn Farm. So you guys know that I had been working on, I joined a um, African or the square of the month club. This is the African and I got my first kit and it's got like two hooks in it, a darning needle, which I have tons of those anyway. Anyway, but um, I think I showed you. So the, the ones that come with the kit are gray and I think I showed you these the first one and these are going to block out to be nine by nine um, my single stitch is always tighter than the rest of anything so but each of these is going to block out to be nine by nine this is block one block two okay single double this has the fa the V and the shell stitch in it if you know how to do those um, and it's really cute. I like it. So those are the three for this month for that kit. And they send you the yarn for it. And it's just, it just says premier anti-piling everyday worsted. It is soft. Okay. So that's what came with the kit. Now, as I said, I was going to go through um, my stash and see what I could come up with. Well, I ended up in Granny's stash. So I've decided that all of the other blocks are going to be granny stash. And I just pick a yarn. I make how many ever blocks I can out of it. And I move on to another yarn out of her stash. And the thing that I'm going to make, this is the yarn I'm going to base it off of. Because I really kind of like this yarn. And there's another one that is a pinks and it's got pinks and purples and stuff in it. So this is actually block two. And you'll see why here in just a minute. And it's got blue green and purple in it but it's very muted I don't know if you can see it is absolutely muted this is block number two and the trim is not exact because I ran out but I wasn't going to give up on that block so it will be you know it's gonna be a scrap it's gonna be a scrap one through and through so um, that's probably the best it's very muted blues and greens and purples so I went in and with that I ran out and I'm just doing my one block, block number one, which is a single stitch out of blue. And the blue is from Granny's stash and it comes really close. So um, I'm just going to go in there and, and I will make as many blocks of this as I have for this ball. And I have another ball that is this color too. So I will probably make, and it's bigger. I just started with a smaller ball, but I will make as many blocks as I can out of the blue. And then I'll find another, I've got a muted green that will probably go with it. I've already got one other one picked out. That's got some purples and grays in it that will, should go and it'll give a pop of white. So, yep. I'm actually going to do two at once and I'm waiting on my next kit to come after I finish that one block. I've got to find some place to put them all because my bag's getting a little full. Just saying. So, yeah, this one's getting full too. So, yep. But that is what's going on in the yarn farm. The bad part in the yarn farm, the negative that I have to put out, is due to all of this stuff, the Straw Family Farm is going to delay opening. We normally open April 1st with regular business hours. We won't this year. Um, we're going to wait until all this blows over. Um, we are still open by appointment only though. So 
That tastes a lot better when it was warm and I'm hungry. <laughs> it is three o'clock and I'm just now eating. So, um, that is our downfall is yarn, uh, in the yarn farm. The business will not be opening April 1st with regular hours. We'll continue until further notice, notice to be open by appointment only until everything calms down. Okay. All right. In the fields, the garden, um, we've talked a little bit about that. Uh, I haven't been able to plant anything down there, but, and this has nothing to do with anything that you guys are probably interested in, but it is very special to me. Okay. And this is, I got some seeds. I actually requested them and he gave them to me from uh, a very wonderful man. His name is Barry, Barry Von Gerp. 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 I need to, my eyes are not adjusting. Van Gerp. Anyway, I was raised in Prune, overseas, um, in Germany. And he had put out on Facebook in one of the groups that I'm in for people who were stationed over there, raised over there. It's just a Prune, Germany, um, American group on Facebook. My mother got me started and she's like, here, join this one, join that one. So I joined this one and he put out that he had marigold seeds. Now I'm not, this is not a knock at any country. Okay. German marigolds are not hybrids. They're very, um, stinky. They keep the mosquitoes away. They do amazing. So he said, he had seeds that he harvested when they lived in Prune, and these are the original German plants. These plants are, what do you say, 40 years old? Okay. Uh, anyway, when I requested them, he did this nice little packet for me, and I'm going to share it with you. It says, from the desk of Barry Von Gerp. Greetings. I hope you have the same enjoyment I get from growing this flower. Some years were not great some were better but i take each year as it comes and hopes for the best a little bit of prune for you so um this is a picture of his plant and these seeds came originally from germany and my camera is stuttering again which i hate because i know that's going to show up and i'm going to keep talking because i don't want to have to start over i've already started over once but he sent me a packet of flowers. I didn't start over. I interrupted. Let's put it that way. I'm splicing them together. And then he sent me some actual, some more blooms that have seeds in them. And he also sent, okay, so he got his original plants in 1981. Okay, and this says to 2019 because he harvested them last year. So this will be 2020's group. He harvests them. Quite a few of them, to be honest with you. And this is some of the, some more of the plants that he has, and those are overflow. And then he's got a nice little informational thing in here. So um, I am going to protect some of these seeds and hopefully get some harvest off of them. And, and I'm not going to plant all of the seeds. I will keep probably four or five seeds back for the next three years because of the weather change. It's the Oklahoma weather change. And that's part of what I worry about being here. And I'm going to update him on the plants here as to how they do in Oklahoma weather. Um, yeah, I think that's all for in the garden. Or in the fields is what we call it. I think we're going to move on to in the farmhouse. And that is RJ and I have been working, RJ's been working super hard because of all of his goodness going on with his horse training program, which I'm super proud of. Um, he had a 7.7 second run. He got his sponsorship. And with that, people realized he was training his own horses. This month alone, he has three outside horses that he is riding plus training his own. So he is super busy doing that. Plus he still works for his uncle. And I have been away from the house a lot this month. Um, the first week, I think I did 
60 some hours. The second week I did 72 hours. And this last week from Saturday to Saturday, this one I happen to know cut and dry, went in Saturday at 6 p.m. And by Saturday at midnight, I had clocked 108 and a half hours. Yeah, it's a lot. So, um, the other house now has coverage. So, I have officially transferred over to the Bartlesville area. So, instead of driving an hour and 20 minutes to my job, I am only driving 27 miles to my job. Yay! It's like 35 minutes from the house. It's amazing. But, I had to cover this weekend on that other house and today is my first day that I've had just for me. The house needs to be cleaned up. The dogs are going crazy. I've got laundry to do. Um, I'm actually eating something that's not takeout. I know beef stroganoff is not a nutritious like, but at this point, I am not going to the grocery store to find something else. So we had the fixings here in the house. I whipped up a batch and that is what I am eating and it's not takeout. So um, also I am, I am talking to a lady who is going to make me a logo for the tiny house and it's going to be the spinning tortoise house. Yep. I'm going to have all my spinning wheels down there. I'll be able to sit and spin and watch my tortoise in the garden. And I am definitely working towards my days of re relaxation. Um, will I ever truly retire? Ah, I don't know. I was a stay-at-home mom and homeschooler for years, and now I'm like, nope, I'm good. I'm going back to work, and I am enjoying it. I really am, even though the coronavirus has given us lots of hours and overtime and having to cover this and that, I'm still okay with it. I am tired. Um, I found my limit. A 19-and-a-half-hour shift is my limit <laughs> because when you put drive time and stuff in there, it comes out to, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get, there's only 24 hours in a day, guys. Just saying. Um, so, yeah, it, it is what it is. Um, today, I'm just really super grateful to live the life that we do. And I have my two new babies. And Duke the Hedgehog is still with me, by the way. And he's going down the tiny house, too, as soon as I get it. So, um, I have my hedgehog, my dog my turtle and now my baby goat I have more goats and I love all my goats don't don't misunderstand I am just super glad that she got to experience to being a mama she has something that loves her 100% unconditionally she doesn't have to be scared around him she doesn't have to be flighty around him she and because he is so curious and he'll walk right up to you, she stays close to him and it, it's kind of made her open up over the last, oh, I don't know, 12, 13 hours, you know, whatever. And so I am super stoked about that one. Um, I love all the births and they, they all make my heart overjoyed. But sometimes you just get those ones that are really, really special. And this one is it. Layton is my connection to Holly and the Angoras. Um, and Lois is out there and she's my connection to Sweetie. So it's just fitting that Sienna left me a little present. Um, she's still here. She, she, I mean, she's doing an amazing job. And if she was to give me another one next year, great. Do I think at nine years old that would be something that we should do? No. She's never bred before. Um, I don't think that I'll, I think I'll take precautions to keep her from breeding again because she is that old. But it's just amazing. An amazing gift from God and from Sienna and my last little tie to those Angoras. So, yeah, I, I'm super happy with it I shouldn't I don't know it's mind-boggling one of those things that's just mind-boggling so and I know that 
I seem hardcore on the outside and we've been called names and but I really do have a heart and and yeah that's something that touched it so anyway I am gonna get off here I think you've seen everything the garden stuff the seeds the um, squares that I'm doing uh, other than that just working the tortoise is my new baby I've got to get the artwork done and you guys will get to see it as soon as it's done um, but yeah Corey and I don't know what I'm gonna Luke I, I don't know unless something jumps out at me he'll probably end up being Luke but at this point I'm ready to call him Superman <laughs> He survived and was born and she she doesn't get along with the other goats and they're kind of mean to her so yeah she probably took a lot to protect that baby so anyway I'm off of here you guys RJ did want to be here we had tried to schedule to podcast with him if I can get him in front of a camera for even five seconds I'll have him tell you his thoughts on the in the barn stall stuff because that's kind of his segment um, and I'm sure he's got something to say about Corey, too. Anyway, I will talk to you all later. Stay safe. Make sure to wash your hands. I know this is not a new concept, but wash your hands. Keep them away from your face. Follow all of the guidelines. Remember, God gave us people for, with wisdom and says to follow them. You know, don't be a fool. So just hang in there and we'll get through this. Talk to you all later. Bye.